We're starting uh, Tariq's car. Before I set off, I'll uh, just show you something interesting on these uh, later platform cars. So, as it's on. One, two, three, four, five. So there we go. That horrible noise. So this is in dyno mode now. So we can start the car. We should be able to turn these off and it not go off. So now you can see it's telling you all ESC and all this stuff's off. Parking sensors are all flashing at me. So now on like a four wheel drive car, like Golf R's, Tiguan's, all that sort of stuff, MQB platform, some of the new transport vans, T6 stuff. If it's four wheel drive, it'll just run on dyno fine without back wheels turning. So you don't need to unplug Aldex, unplug fuses. For a front wheel drive, some stuff, some cars you have just absolute pain in unplugging all sorts of fuses. Not gonna need to on this one. So, neutral and brake on, ignition on, when all lights have stopped doing what they're doing, hazards on, accelerate all the way down five times, dyno mode. Now if I set off, that should just go off. There we go. So if you're on the dyno and um, it creeps forward, it'll knock off. So we'll go for a little drive. Oil's not uh, right up to temperature now. Coolant's not quite up to temperature. But this car, it's got the 2872 turbo on, which is ball bearing which a lot of people go on about making it spool better and stuff like that. You're not going to make a car spool earlier by having a ball bearing turbo on. It's just not going to happen. But what you will get is better transient response. So going from 10 PSI to 20 PSI will happen quicker. Or between gears, you're not going to drop as much boost. So that's, that's one of the benefits of a ball bearing turbo. I've got other benefits as well, but that's the, that's the main one. The bad thing about ball bearing turbos is they don't like uh, don't like any bad oil whatsoever, which a normal to normal journal bearing is not a big fan of bad oil, but the ball bearing will wear out quicker. And uh, these ceramic ball bearing turbos that people run when they when they start sending pieces of ceramic round your engine, your mains bearings, your rod bearings, your cylinder liners, or your balls, they'll know about it. So, I'll turn this uh, other camera on. We're driving along, fifth gear, 55 mile an hour. No problem, it'll go into sixth gear at 55 mile an hour. Making a few PSI boosts, making about well, two or three PSI boosts, just cruising along, accelerate a little bit. I'm literally just touching throttle, five PSI. This turbo just behaves like a normal turbo. Obviously if you go full throttle at these sort of speeds, you're not you're not gonna advance as quickly as um, with a much smaller turbo. But that's one of the things that kills drivetrains as well. So if you've got 500 foot pound of torque at 1500 RPM, sounds amazing, it'll probably drive amazing how long is it going to last because all that pressure and all that force is getting put into components that are spinning slowly and trying to accelerate them. When your revs are up it's not as big as it, it's not a big deal so obviously that's why people buy diesel engines to get the more, get more torque at lower RPM which is what you've got and even if you move away from the lowest RPM you still get a decent shove compared to a petrol engine and obviously variable vein turbos which petrol wise is still probably only the odd petrol car that's got a variable vein turbo I think the main one's a Porsche turbo and uh, it's the variable veins that make uh, the diesel turbos good like we 50 gear, 60 drives absolutely fine 
it's not a noisy car, she's not got a, a crazy noisy exhaust on which would probably make you want to uh, have something a, a bit less revvy if it were a really noisy when you're cruising, but it's absolutely fine. This car's got them uh, wind deflectors on which I don't quite see the appeal of because it sounds like your window's down all the time, which is quite annoying. This uh, it drives absolutely fine, and uh, we've not drove it enough to do tons of uh, economy runs in it. See how many miles per gallon it's getting. Most of the running that we've done is uh, driving it fairly hard, but it uh, don't seem any any thirstier than uh, the standard car that you're running hard. So it's. Uh, it, I think the customer was going to be happy with it anyway. He's, he did have concerns that it was going to be an out and out track car that, or a sort of weekend only car that weren't going to behave when he was uh, cruising around in traffic and stuff. But it's absolutely fine. It's got an upgraded, upgraded clutch with an upgraded pressure plate, which is stiffer than a standard one. But the laws of physics dictate that you can't have something stiffer and it feel exactly the same under your foot. So. But it works pretty well. It's, it's got the uh, sintered disc, which can be grabby, but it's not too bad. It's still on a dual mass flywheel. I don't like common rail engines with uh, single mass flywheels. Don't work too good. We'll just uh, get a little acceleration. It's not a slow car. Uh, it does what it needs to do, like 35 to 60, something like that. It drives really well. Like we said on the previous video, it did well a little bit more drivable at low end with a 2260, but like what, this is 30 mile an hour, third gear, put down, a little bit of waiting. Where you go well before three grand. It's uh, really nice. It just it is a shame that these engines they get so hot exhaust temperature wise because we could rev it a little bit more. There's no reason why, as far as power's concerned, this is not dropping off at all. But it just gets hot. So you can't, you can't rev it. Like people say, oh, why can't you rev your diesel to 6,000, 7,000 times an issue? You've not got enough time to get the fuel in, mixed and burned. And obviously if you can't get it in and burned efficiently, it's going to get hot. And that, that is the problem with even efficient engines at IRPM when they're running diesel. Diesel burns slower, you get more energy, but it's not... Um, it's not quick enough, it's not as quick as petrol to burn. We'll just uh, turn that traction control off. And just see if we can get a little, little pull. Tons of wheel spin. Too much near the limiter. Not always a good idea to be. Uh, driving a customer's car quite so hard. It's, uh, it's always good to demonstrate what it can do as well. We're off. We've got 5.8 to 60. And that will by no means uh, perfect launch a little bit of work you definitely get that into the low fives on a grippy surface it's going to be a hell of a lot faster so this is all done now ready to run back to the customer he should be happy with it we've uh, 
done a lot of work, logged a lot of hours on this car, lots of dyno runs. It took some uh, blood, sweat and tears to get it to where it is, but we're happy that the customer's going to be happy and that's the main thing. I think if, uh, if somebody else had done this job and charged every minute they spent on it, it'd be a lot of money, which when you're breaking new ground, it's inevitable, but we... Uh, we wanted to learn a little bit from it as well. It'd have been nice to have waited a little bit and uh, had one of our own cars to do it on. But the customer were happy to wait, so that's a good thing, and we appreciate that. So, let us know what you think. It's uh, a lot of money for the power, so we don't need uh, anybody to tell us that. Everybody says that about everything. It's always people that can't afford it, which is a shame. But anyway, we'll. Uh, Hopefully we'll be updating with some uh, more A5 stuff shortly.